Hello, welcome to Epic Space Models. In this video, I will give you a guided tour of this 3D printed model of the BFR upper stage. The BFR is SpaceX's massive rocket designed for humans from Earth to Mars. It was proposed in 2016 and SpaceX has updated the design every year since then. What we are looking at now is the upper stage of the rocket as proposed in September 2018 when Elon Musk announced the first paying customer for the BFR. So this is the actual spaceship that goes into orbit, then leaves Earth's orbit to go to the Moon, Mars and beyond. Now let's talk about the model. The scale of the model is 100th, which basically means that 1 meter becomes 1 centimeter. The total length is 55 cm and the hull diameter is 9 cm. Even at this scale, this model is massive. And I am not even talking about the booster, which will come in future videos. From the front, we first have the main window, then six rows of smaller windows, which I guess are here so the passengers can enjoy the view from their cabins. These windows are lit by three color LEDs, which can be controlled independently by software. Moving to the rear, we have a cluster of seven Raptor engines. One interesting feature of these engines is that they are not vacuum optimized, but sea level optimized. Usually on a spaceship, you would find engines with a very wide nozzle, which gives better performances in vacuum. However, to reduce the development cost, SpaceX decided to use the same engines on the booster and the spaceship. This makes the engines of the ship a little less effective in vacuum, but this also gives more engine art capability when landing. Indeed, since there are seven engines and only three are needed to land, you can afford to lose several engines and still be able to land safely. The most distinctive feature of the 2018 design are the four actuated fins. These fins are used to control the ship during atmospheric reentry. Although they look like wing, their purpose is not to produce lift but drag. Indeed, they act more like aero brakes, a bit like a skydiver using his arms and legs to control his fall. One of the things you notice when looking at this model is that the hull is segmented. There are four segments from the rear to front. And the reason for that is that since this model is too big to fit inside the build volume of my 3D printer, I had to slice it into smaller chunks to make it 3D printable. As you might have noticed if you have watched the previous videos about this model, designing the outside is just half of the modeling work. Once you're done with the outside, you still have to create the internal structure to have the different parts fit together, as well as the mechanisms that activate the fins. So let's remove the covers and see what the inside looks like. We are now looking at the inside of the aft section. From the left to right, we have a cluster of seven LEDs for the engines, then two servo motors to actuate the fins, and finally, a control board with two microcontrollers. At this point, some people might wonder, why do you need two microcontrollers in this model? Don't worry, I will answer this question later. First, let's have a look at how the engines are lit. In this model, all windows and engines use the same model of LEDs. These are individually addressable, three colors LEDs called NeoPixels. This means that it is possible to control the color and brightness of each LED independently. There are three reasons why I chose these components. First, each LED has an integrated resistor, so you can plug them directly to a 5V bus. No need to solder an individual resistor for each light. Second, you can daisy chain almost as many LEDs as you want. So no matter how many you have, you just need one data wire coming out from the control board. Third, because you can dynamically change the color of the LEDs, you can create cool effects such as realistic lighting sequence for the engines. People watching SpaceX videos might have noticed that when the engines start, they first glow green before turning yellow. This is because the engine is ignited by injecting a special fuel into the combustion chamber. This fuel being hypergolic with liquid oxygen, it starts the combustion reaction and produces this green glow. Once the combustion is started, the regular fuel starts flowing into the engine and the color turns yellow. As a disclaimer, this is the ignition sequence of the Merlin engine used on the Falcon 9. The actual ignition sequence of the Raptor engine used on the BFR might be different. 
Now, let's have a look at how the fins are actuated. Each fin rotates around metal rods inserted at both ends. A third rod on this side acts as a lever for the servo mechanism. Each servo motor has an arm that connects with the fin lever, so that when the arm moves, it pushes the lever, which rotates the fins around its hinge. There are several things to be careful when designing this kind of mechanism. First, servo motors have a limited mechanical range, so you must design the mechanism so that you do not exceed the range of the servo. Second, each time you have moving parts, you must check for possible collisions. Collision between the servo arm and the hull, collision between the fin and the hull, etc. For this reason, it is very important to create a 3D model of the complete mechanism and check for collisions before 3D printing it. This is especially true when you have moving parts in a confined volume. Third, you want to make sure that the mechanism can be assembled. Sometimes you can find yourself with a mechanism that works well in simulations, with no collision, only to find out later that it is just impossible to put all the parts together. Now, let's move to the control board. It is using two Arduino Pro Mini microcontrollers. The bottom one receives commands from the outside world and controls the servo motors. The top one controls the LEDs. When a command is received by the bottom Arduino, it is executed internally if it is a servo command, or forwarded to the top Arduino through the IC bus if it is an LED command. Now, why do we need two Arduinos? Well, the short answer is that the program controlling the servo motors and the program controlling the LEDs interfere with one another if placed in the same microcontroller. At first, I was planning to use only one Arduino. Everything went well until I tested the LEDs and servo motors together. At that time, the servo motors started to behave erratically. What was happening is that when the Arduino talks to the LED strip, it must send data at a very specific rate. To prevent anything from messing up with the transmission, it temporarily deactivates the interruption mechanism used by the other program to control the servo motors. As a result, each time the Arduino sends instructions to the LEDs, the transmission to the servo motor is messed up. Using two Arduinos was the simplest way to solve the problem. This is an example of why system level testing is so important, especially in the aerospace industry. You can have components that work well separately, but do not work well when put together. Moving to the front, we have an array of LEDs for the small windows. These are the same LEDs as for the engines, and they took an insane amount of time to wire especially because I had a crappy soldering iron that was not heating enough. I bought a new one since then. Moving to the front, we find the servo mechanism of the forward fins, and it is basically the same as for the aft fins. Finally, at the front, we find seven LEDs for the main window. Now, the last question is, how is this model operated? This is the user interface that I use to control the model from my computer. It is written in MATLAB using the tool App Designer. So this is mainly a tool for testing and development purpose. And what this allows me to do is to send specific commands to either the LEDs or the servo motor. So for example, in the top left corner, I have a drop-down menu and four sliders. So from the drop-down menu, I can select either one single LED or one group of LEDs. So here, let's select engine's outer ring. And now I can use the three color sliders and the one brightness sliders to control these lights. So these lights are the lights of the six engines of the outer ring all around the central uh, Raptor engine. So first, let's increase the brightness so that the lights actually turn on. So now, since I have the four sliders set to 100%, the color is white. From here, I can change the color from white to yellow, or red, or blue, or even some kind of nice pink. So this system is very flexible. You don't have to, de to decide beforehand which color you want to have and buy a set of red LEDs, green LEDs, or yellow LEDs. 
you just use exactly the same LEDs everywhere in your model and then you can change the color afterwards anytime you want using the software. Next, on the right side, I have a similar system for the servo motors. So from the drop-down menu, I select the servo motor that I want to operate and then I use this slider to send the servo to any specific position that I want. So I use this system a lot when putting the model together because um, as I explained in uh, previously in this video, when you are using moving parts, you want to make sure that you don't have parts colliding with one another and you want to make sure that the mechanical range of the servo motor is enough for what you want to do. So each time I bolt a servo motor on its mount plate, I use this interface to send the servo motor to 0% and 100% and I make sure that first the mechanical range of the servo motor is enough to move the fin to both ends and I make sure that the mechanism does not collide with any other part when the servo motor goes to 0% and when it goes to 100%. So again, it's very useful to have this kind of interface which allows you to control any servo motor you want and send it to any specific position uh, when you are during the assembly process. And finally, below the sliders, I have a bunch of buttons which are kind of shortcuts. So each button sends one command or several commands. For example, if I click the All Up button, this sends uh, commands to all four servo motors and all the four fins move up at the same time. If I click the All Down button, this sends commands to all four servo motors so that the four fins move down at the same time. This concludes the guided tour of the BFR ship model. Thank you for listening, please give me a thumb up if you liked it and don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss future videos.